I was born, according to the Royal College of Arts website, in 1798. I didn't actually study at the Royal College. I don't want you to think that because I'm actually quite anti-monarchist, which is why I boycott Dutchies Originals, um, these musicians from the 1980s, and uh, Victoria Station, which makes it very difficult to travel around, but at least I've got my principles, my Victoria principles. Good. Um, that sets the mood for the lecture, so that's good news. I'm from London. A lot of talented people can't afford to live in affordable housing in London anymore, which poses this important question. Will these anti-homeless spikes really be sufficient to deter a rough sleeping magician? <laughs> yeah, think about it. I haven't. Locksmiths. They should get key worker status, shouldn't they? Mm. <laughs> That's my best joke. Italy also has a north-south divide. The north is rich and boring, the south is poor and crazy. Uh, to reconcile this, I'm planning to open a boutique in Milan, in the north of Italy, that sells clothing for Italian businesswomen woven from the excess body hair of Neapolitan men from the south <laughs> to help redistribute the wealth. And this boutique will be called Hersuit, and the sign will do this. Hersuit, Hersuit, look at that. Hopefully it will be the kind of stimulus that will help re-establish growth. Now, London is increasingly resembling a phallocentric game of architectural Tetris. The gherkin, the shard, the cheese grater, the walkie-talkie, and soon the undershaft. Have you heard about the undershaft? That's actually its real name. So clearly, architects have small penises, which is why I'm currently working with UCL in London to prototype a satirical range of 3D-printed London skyscraper sex toys. <laughs> in a project I'm calling Genital Trification. <laughs> I'm going to stop it there. Why are you doing this? And I said, modern life is driving me up the wall, sir. And I thought he was going to tell me off, but actually he was much more supportive than that. <laughs> he was just on the way back from Middles. It's quite good, look at that. I was quite pleased. This is pre-9-11, never do this. These gentlemen are from Her Majesty's prison. They escorted me inside the prison for questioning, thus helping me succeed in my initial objective. <laughs> I was later arrested for aggravated trespass, but all charges were subsequently dropped after my teacher, Andre Stitt, from Belfast, agreed that what I was doing constituted a piece of art. Six years later, in what I consider to be an act of plagiarism, Michael Stone claimed that his attempt to break into the Northern Ireland Assembly was also a piece of performance art. The judge dismissed this theory as wholly undeserving of belief. The performance art defence has also recently been used by American far-right radio host Alex Jones and by biographer Tim O'Brien to explain Donald Trump. Apologies for setting that precedent. precedent. Um, never try to break into a prison. Also, never hide yourself inside a piece of unattended baggage in Brussels railway station. Um, I just about got away with this in 2013, but if you try this now, I, I can't guarantee your safety. I do these things so you don't have to, basically. That, that's... In 2010, I invited people to construct a large cardboard model of Croydon Town Centre, culminating with me dressing up as Godzilla and destroying the model in front of an assembled audience of the children of Croydon who had helped me to build the model. I called this performance Destroydon. At the end, I invited all the audience to come and help me smash up the remains of the model. You know, uh, an extreme form of urban planning, if you will, but Croydon have got ambitious plans. And at the time, it all seemed like harmless fun, until the following year when rioting in Croydon led to many of the actual buildings represented in the model being burnt to the ground by many of those same young children you just saw in that video. <laughs> In the same year, I went to Tokyo and installed London Underground bobbly strap hangers in apartment buildings, skyscrapers and subway trains to reduce injury during seismic events. Ten days later, <laughs> Japan suffers its most powerful quake in history and again I realise how difficult it is being consistently seconds ahead of one's time. As an artist, I'm both culpable and vulnerable to gentrification. So to protest the death of social housing, I transported a coffin decorated to resemble a 70s London Tower block in a horse-drawn carriage to the Barbican Centre. And then eulogies took place, followed by the placing of flat-pack models of social housing in the lake 
in a nod to Norse sea burial. Most recently at the Earl Grade Waterfront redevelopment, which is a contested space as part of the Extravagant Bodies Festival in Serbia. Anyway, post Grenfell, you'll be happy to know that I've recently devised a new, more optimistic ending for the death of social housing, which involves air burial. This is the way I'd like to be buried. I'd like people to attach helium balloons to me and just let me go into the sky. Then at the edge of the atmosphere, the balloons will burst. I'll fall back to Earth. I don't know, I haven't thought it through. I know what you're thinking. It, it, it's great that art can change the world, you're thinking. I just wish sometimes it would do so for the better. All right, I've found one example. In a performance designed to cause the kind of uncertainty that leads to possibility, it involves running about a minute ahead of the actual Olympic torch with a fake Olympic torch. And uh, that woman's face. That, that is why I do what I do for, for that. Because I believe that art is at its most powerful when observed by non-art audiences. That's why I like to make work in the street. I think at best, art can be pedagogical. It prepares the consciousness for new possibilities. And by watching this presentation, your mind has been altered too, so watch out for that. Most recently, I formed a radical feminist impersonation of Dublin 1981 Eurovision winners Bucks Fizz. The redux I'd really like to do in Ireland is, uh, of course, Taffin, starring Piers Brosnan. Um, it's a classic. I was really asked here to speak about Schedule Fears, which is a recent project I did in association with Counterpoints Arts. We were all discussing why we were in the current political situation just after Brexit, and everyone had been quite surprised by the results. And the polls were wrong, because people weren't talking about how they were intending to vote. And there was a general feeling that people weren't talking enough to each other in a truthful, honest way. So I had a silly idea, I thought, to build almost like a confession booth as a way of facilitating this, where strangers could go and talk to each other in a kind of safe, anonymous, private environment. And it happened, it was launched as part of Who We Are, which was an exhibition at Tate Modern in March. My family went in, a mother and her two sons, and I said, it probably won't work because it's better if you're complete strangers, but they went in anyway. And afterwards she came out and said, my sons have been talking to me about things that we've never discussed as a family. I've accidentally created something a little bit magical, and the next stage is to take it to non-art spaces. This weekend it's going to be at the British Museum. We're thinking about putting it on the US-Mexico border, one cubicle on each side, so maybe we can bring it to the whatever kind of soft or hard border gets put between here and the north. My free balloons project. And uh, <laughs> that's the most popular one. We live in unprecedented times, ladies and gentlemen. Let's all try and make some unprecedented art. I've been Rich Delamenici. Thank you very much. Is that lunch?